Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. And today, taking a request out of FuseVR.com on how to build a selfie stick for VR. So let's just dive right into what we're here. So here we have the selfie stick. We have a cylinder to represent the stick. And then we have a quad, which is basically our image. And you can see here that I've added in an HMD to represent my head so I can turn around. And so why don't we just go ahead and take a nice selfie with this tent and smile. Sweet. All right. So let's pop out a VR here, put down the HMD. Now, basically what happened is when I pulled the trigger, we took a, a screenshot and you can see right here, it, we already have it in our screenshots folder. So that's perfect. And so why don't we just go ahead and dive into how to build this. All right, so starting up here, we have Unity open. I've upgraded to 5.5 and I think it seems pretty stable so far. So I'm just gonna go ahead, call this selfie, save it to my desktop and create that real fast. And for the environment, it's just a free asset off the Unity Asset Store. I think it was called Low Poly Snow or something like that. Let me, let's, let's find it out right now. It was the Winterland, there we go. Let's go ahead, import that in. It's pretty beautiful scenery, that's for sure. So get that one, and then we'll also use SteamVR, as we always do. So this one takes a little bit of time, but we'll get it. And next one, SteamVR. All right, so now once we have those, we basically want to go ahead and open up the, that demo scene. So go to Winterland, demo, and demo. And we can go ahead and close the asset store now. I'm going to drag the game view over. So when you, as soon as you open it up, SteamVR is going to ask for those basic settings. You can go ahead and accept that. It's not a big deal. Now, this scene is actually pretty, pretty small. So I'm just going to go ahead, get rid of the main camera, and then center everything and put it all within our centered game object. Let's just call it environment. And we're going to scale this up by about 10. The sum around like 10 or 8 seems to work pretty well. And what ends up happening is actually we don't, when you scale things, you don't actually change the lights. So you're going to actually have to go in and manually increase the range on all these lights by 10. It's a bit of a slow process, but I'd rather have a good looking scene than one that's really dark. <laughs> all right. So once we have that, go ahead and drag in the SteamVR prefab. It's in prefabs and camera rig. There we go. Let's zoom in there. Just massage it a little bit, just close to the tent. Seems like a reasonable place to put it. So now let's just go ahead and build our, our selfie stick. So for this, going to need a 3D object, a cylinder. Let's pull this up. And let's also create an, another empty game object. Call this selfie. Put the cylinder underneath it. And, and whoops, just center that there. And for this, what we're going to do is simply scale it down a bit. So I was using about 0 0.1, 1, 0.1. So it seems a bit reasonable here. And we can go ahead and rotate it like 90, uh, 90 degrees, and I believe the X, or sorry, and the Z. There we go. And next thing we want to do is go ahead and just add a basic quad to this. Again, we're going to want to rotate it by 90 degrees and position it at the edge of our cylinder. So switch to local mode there. Get it close enough and we can adjust the numbers. So this one looks like it's one. This one looks like it would probably be like 0.5 maybe. And that looks pretty reasonable. We'll go ahead and move this to 000, which is like kind of over here. So let's actually go ahead and just parent the selfie stick to our right controller. And we can reset it. That way it's in the right position that we want. And go ahead, get rid of the model. And so here's the, the real trick for the selfie stick is going to the quad and adding in a camera. 
So basically this camera is what's going to allow us to re-render the scene from the point of view of our selfie point, or basically where we can take a picture. So we're going to have to reorient it, which is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate that guy around by 180 degrees. There we go. Now make sure we want to change this clipping plane to uh, about 0.1. And we can, we can massage the camera a bit more to make sure, like, say, the stick doesn't get in the way or anything like that. But definitely want to make sure that you minimize where that, that field of view error is. So once we have that, and that's also parented so it will know it's attached to our selfie stick, what we can do is go ahead and create a render texture. Let's call this selfie image. And this is basically what's, what's, what we're going to do here is have our camera is going to capture an image of the scene from that point of view. And then once it takes that image, it's going to save it onto disk into what's called a render texture. And so that's what this thing here is. And so in order for the camera to know where to save it, we actually have to assign a render texture to that target texture right there. So go ahead and do that. And now that we have a texture, a render texture is basically a texture, we can actually use that on a material. So let's go ahead, create a material. Let's call this image. And I'm going to change it from a PBR material, which is the standard material, to a unlit texture. Go ahead and drag that there. And let's go ahead and assign it to our quad. Perfect. So. Doing that, we've basically gone ahead and created the basics of what a selfie stick could be. Now, you can obviously make this a bit more complicated by adding in a stereo effect, although granted, your general average selfie camera won't have stereo, but you're in VR, so you can add stereo, which is pretty cool. And it, that's also not terribly complicated. For that, I'd probably recommend the Unity Portal uh, Asset Pack from HTC, and you can use that to basically build up the this uh, stereo view of a portal, but also a selfie stick. So that's a pretty cool one to use. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our render texture here. So for this, what we have is basically a bunch of different settings. So we can change this to basically be as high resolution or low resolution as we want. So I'm going to go ahead and do a 480 by uh, like two, 240 should be good doesn't have to be perfect. Definitely make sure to set some anti-aliasing in. You can at lower resolutions because, I mean, obviously this whole image isn't going to take up all of your screen space. You can definitely afford to use a higher, even like eight sample anti-aliasing. It's really valuable. Highly recommend it. Use it. So we're going to go for that. And we can change our scale accordingly. So it's like about 1.7. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but you probably want the resolution to match the, the scale that you use on that quad. So at this point, basically have a selfie stick in place. The only thing we have left to do is actually capture the image. And for that, what I'm going to bring up here is this uh, response on how to save a picture from a camera in game. Exactly what we want. So. For this, there's this gigantic amount of code that's sitting here. We're going to take this, modify it a little bit to make, make it suit our needs, but you can see here, it basically, it allows us to take some high-res images and use those for our game. So this is perfect. So why don't we go ahead, go back into Unity, create a C-sharp script. Let's call this high-res image. Go ahead, open that up. And literally what I'm going to do is copy all this code. So one of the beauties of Unity is, yes, it's a great game engine, but so many people use it that oftentimes you can find the solution to whatever you want online. And that's, I can't say that about any other game engine or any other platform really that I've worked on. So glad that I can say that about Unity. So there are a couple of errors that pop up right off the bat, mainly because the camera is deprecated in the newer versions of Unity. So we're just going to have to create that. And that's just getting a reference there to the camera. And I'm also going to get a reference to our SteamVR tracked controller. So there we go. And call this controller. So we can get those references. And once we have that, 
So all these errors go away because we've now referenced the camera, which is perfect. We're going to want to go ahead and make some slight modifications here. So here, instead of getting input down on K, we're going to do that on the Steam VR trigger pull. And then here, what I'm going to do is get the original render texture. So here we go, original. And this is going to be camera.target texture. And we can now get this original. And then here you'll see that they're, after they get the capture and save that to disk, what they do is they set the target texture to null. So that will actually create a problem. And I encourage you to try this out just straight out of the bat. It's kind of, Although if you do get sick, this is probably going to be very disorienting. But what will end up happening is once you remove that render texture, Unity will think that that camera that you just added to the scene is going to be the main camera that it should use for VR. And as a result, your head will swap positions with that, which you definitely don't want. So you're going to definitely want to make sure that you keep a render texture assigned to it after you're done reading the pixels in. So that should hopefully take care of that. We're just go ahead and hit save. And the last thing we have to do is just change this get key down to a controller dot get trigger down. And for that, what I'm going to do is just go to my favorite script in the world, or at least the one that I always go back to to copy this. So let's go ahead, copy that. And we'll just copy the trigger part and use that here. And go ahead and get rid of that. Oh, whoops. Yeah, OK, perfect. Awesome. So, uh, oh wait, I just, I need device though. Sweet. Let's just change track to controller to controller and that should do it. So basically what this is doing is when you pull down the trigger, you're letting the system know that you want to take that high res shot and to avoid you actually going in and pulling the trigger again, resulting in it trying to take two shots and then destroying your frame rate. This actually already kind of does destroy your frame rate, but if you put it in a coroutine, it should be fine and just space it out properly. But to avoid that, basically they have this Boolean here to make sure that everything's fine and you're not actually going to accidentally take another image while another image is processing. So it's a good fail safe just to make sure that that exists. And pretty much once we have that, we just have to add this script to our scene. So let's go ahead, go to the selfie stick, drag in our high res image script and see this populates already. The nice thing here is we can change the, the width and height of our image when we take it. So that's a pretty nice feature to have. So let's go ahead, drag our camera onto that. And we're just, we're right handed. We're going to do that. If you saw the previous stream, we figured out a simple solution to basically choose which hand you want to interact with. So that should hopefully help lefties. But for that part, we're pretty much done here. So we can now go ahead, assuming the references stayed, I'm actually going to stop the maximize on play to avoid that issue. And looks like my controller's turned off. So I'm going to hop right into VR. So you'll see what happened here is actually our reference to the render texture disappeared. And that's one of the reasons why it turned black. Um, unfortunately, basically the only way to fix that is to go here, drag that onto the texture, save, go to new scene, and then reopen that scene. For whatever reason, even when you save the scene, it still doesn't keep the reference to that camera. I don't know why. That seems just like a bug in Unity. It's a, at least an easy workaround, but still kind of annoying. All right, so let me go ahead and hop into VR. All right, so I just jumped into VR, and I forgot one important thing that we have to do. So if we go back to the script, what you'll notice is that it actually saves your screenshot to file. And it saves it in this file path of the asset screenshots. Now, the problem is if that path doesn't exist, you error out, and as a result, a lot of bad things happen. So we're going to make sure that we actually have the screenshots folder in here. Now, obviously, that's not the best way to make sure that your code is uh, infallible, but obviously, this is an easy way to just show it off and learn in the process. So once we do that, go ahead, put the headset on. One thing we'll note right off the bat is that 
our scale is a little off, so this selfie stick is pretty gigantic. I'm probably going to go ahead and shrink that down. It's also rotated by 90 degrees, so make sure to do that. So that's why testing is important. So let's go ahead and rotate this by 90 degrees. So it's 270 here. And then let's also drop the scale by like a half. That uh, should feel a bit more manageable. Go ahead, jump back into VR. Perfect. There we go. We could actually probably scale it down a little more, but overall this feels fine. So the last thing we're going to want to do is just add our headset in here. And that's actually a pretty easy thing to do. So going into our left controller here, we'll see that there's this render model script. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that game object, put it into our head, go ahead and paste, and it misaligned it, but that's fine, and throw a model override for the generic HMD. So that adds that into our scene. Go ahead, hit save. We're going to have to add a layer in here. So let's call this the headset layer. Make sure your headset is on that layer. There we go. And then on your main VR camera, you're going to want to make sure the eyes cull everything except the headset. And the reason for this is so that when you put the headset on, you don't have the headset model being visible by, by yourself. Because otherwise that can lead to a little, um, a little distortion and uncomfortable VR experiences. So go ahead, grab this. I dropped my controller it's all the way down here. So go all right so here's the selfie stick you can see the model this works fine looks good so smile awesome so we should hopefully have that in our screenshots folder so you'll see there's actually nothing here initially and the reason for that is unity just takes time to load it in so if we now go ahead open it up you'll see it start loading and there are screenshots so Hopefully that was useful. Uh, let me know. Again, put all suggestions on our website at fusevr.com slash the forums. There's a su suggestions tab there. Put them there. I definitely will go through all of them, and that's where I found this one, and glad I can help make this. So let me know if this was useful, and you can also follow us on social, Facebook, Twitter, and I definitely am posting a lot more content there and should be citing it. So thanks so much for watching, and this has been Fuse Man. I'm signing out.